Breaking news. The Fed's next move could turn your portfolio, including the housing market, upside down. Are you ready? Because the last time the Fed made an emergency rate cut, the market went wild. Did you know that an emergency rate cut was even a thing? Well, they are. And here's what you need to know. Right now, more stock market investors are calling for the Federal Reserve to do an emergency rate cut to prevent a recession or a stock market crash. And everyone is wondering what that would mean for the stock market, for mortgage rates, and for housing prices. Now, we don't have a crystal ball, but we can run down real quickly every point in recent history when this happened, and that should give us an idea of what to expect next. Let's look at our current situation first. The Federal Reserve is expected to cut rates at its September meeting due to recent weak economic data, rising unemployment, and moderating inflation. In fact, there's a 100% chance that they will Based on their meeting last week, we know a cut is coming in just five weeks. The question is just by how much? And that feels like good news for a lot of people, and I think it is. It might not be fast enough, though, because there's talk on Wall Street about an intermeeting rate cut or an emergency rate cut, which means the Fed could cut rates even before September if they fear a sharp recession or economic shock. Historically, the Fed has cut rates between meetings during major crisis. And based on public sentiment, many are considering right now a crisis. The last time this happened was in March 2020, when the pandemic hit and shut down the economy completely, sparking a sharp yet very brief recession. Then the emergency rate cut was by a half a point, 5%, or 50 basis points. Mortgage rates plummeted to historic lows, resulting in a surge in refinancing and home buying activity. House prices increased significantly as low mortgage rates boosted demand. The stock market initially plunged, but later recovered as monetary and fiscal stimulus measures took effect. It's like we just watched this movie and we're seemingly building up for an encore. I mean, it's like we're getting a chance to place a bet on the Super Bowl on the Monday morning after it was played and we already know who wins. But is what happened in 2020 how it always plays out? Well, let's check to see how certain we can be about the moves that we can make. In January 2001, that was when the dot-com bubble burst, leading to a sharp decline in tech stock valuations and significant market instability. The Fed cut rates then by a half a point. Mortgage rates began to decline, making borrowing cheaper and spurring mass refinancing. The lower mortgage rates helped stabilize house prices, which had been under pressure at the time. And the stock market initially reacted positively, but moved downward with volatility for almost two years before reversing. In April of 2001, the economy was weakening further with growing fears of a recession. The Fed cut rates again by a half a point. Mortgage rates continued downward, encouraging more home buyers and refinancers. House prices stabilized and modestly increased due to cheaper borrowing costs. Stocks, they saw a short moment of gains, but concerns about economic weakness led to fluctuating performance. In September of 2001, the 9-11 terrorist attacks caused massive economic disruption and uncertainty. The Fed cut rates again by a half a point. This time, mortgage rates dropped significantly, leading to an increase in refinancing and home purchasing, which increased demand for housing and pushed prices higher. The stock market's response, however, was mixed due to the long shutdown after the 9-11 attacks, and heightened uncertainty proliferated. I mean, we had never experienced anything like that before. We didn't know what was going to happen next. So people stood fast in a wait-and-see type mode. In August 2007, the subprime mortgage crisis began to unravel, leading to a major housing market collapse. The Fed cut rates again by 0.5%. Initially, mortgage rates decreased, but broader financial instability led to tighter lending standards, so less buying, less refinancing, despite the lower rates. House prices, they continued to fall due to the broader housing market crisis, and the stock market experienced severe declines as the financial crisis unfolded. Then in January of 2008, the financial crisis deepened, leading to a dramatic decline in stock prices and economic instability. This time, the Fed cut rates by three quarters of a point. Mortgage rates fell, providing relief to borrowers, but things were feeling so bad, there was a higher than expected risk aversion among the consumer. By this time, people were just freaked out, thinking it was the end of the world. House prices declined even further as economic conditions worsened. Then in October of 2008, the collapse of Lehman Brothers marked a peak in the financial crisis, causing panic in all financial markets. The Fed cut rates by a half a point. Mortgage rates decreased sharply, though credit availability remained constrained. What good are low rates if people won't give you the money to borrow? Housing prices, though, stabilized slightly due to lower mortgage rates, but overall, 
remained low due to the economic environment, and the stock market reacted negatively due to the severe financial instability. So over the recent years, you can see there are some patterns, but it's a mixed bag when it comes to the short-term outcomes. And so could the Fed cut rates before September? Well, JP Morgan's chief economist, Michael Faroli, believes there's a strong case for it. However, others like Wilmington Trust Wilmer Smith argue that such a move could spook the markets. If the latest jobs report is anything to go by, there's a growing consensus on Wall Street that the Fed might cut rates by 50 basis points in September, followed by more aggressive cuts in the fall. When the Federal Reserve starts cutting interest rates, the stock market tends to react with heightened volatility. While lower interest rates can lead to financial asset inflation and long-term stock growth, the short run, it's very unpredictable. On the other hand, mortgage rates typically decrease, making it a good time for refinancing or purchasing real estate, which often leads to rising house prices. In hindsight, whoever bought during these volatile times and held on tightly eventually came out a winner. The next Federal Reserve meeting is on September 18th and expectations are high because there's a 100% chance that the Fed will cut interest rates. The only question is whether it will be by a quarter of a point or half a point. And market expectations also predict more rate cuts in November and December. So if you're waiting to buy or refinance, at the very least, that opportunity is here. And in the near future, it seems like it's only going to get a little better for you. So it is a good time to get clear on what type of real estate is going to move you towards your goals the fastest. And if at any time you feel you need some one-on-one -on -one help with that, hit me up at reiace.com and we'll hammer it out together. By the way, even with a looming recession, there's still a way for you to get up to $150,000 at 0% interest right now. Let me explain. If your credit score is 680 or higher, you have no open collections or bankruptcies in the last seven years, you can get 0% interest capital from Bank of America for real estate and business investments. Even when everyone is panicking about a market collapse and emergency rate cuts and all that stuff, this program is still on. I've helped nine clients this month already get up to $150,000 each through this. So before goes away, check it out at nocostcapital.com and I'll hook you up too. And it would be irresponsible for me to turn you on to these types of funds if I didn't at least give you a little bit of guidance on how to use it to make more money. And that's why I pulled this video out special for you to watch next. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.